Focus groups. Focus groups are widely used today both by market researchers and social scientists. The use of the focus group method can be traced back to the 1940s, but it was not until the 1980s that it began to be a popular method within the social sciences. This module is designed to provide you with an overview of the focus group method and appreciation of the strengths and weaknesses associated with it. This quote is taken from David Morgan and usefully illustrates how focus groups may be defined in terms of the explicit use of group interaction to produce data as opposed to a one-to-one -one interview format. The principal purpose of focus group research is all about using the interaction between a group of interviewees to generate discussion about a topic. They typically involve six to ten participants. The group interview may actually seek to examine group dynamics as a social phenomenon in itself. The researcher may be interested in studying how agreement or conflict emerges and the ways in which individual participants feed off each other's responses, or one could study the ways in which the facilitator shapes the nature of the discussion. Focus groups are not a cheap and quick data collection method. Before an effective focus group is undertaken, a huge amount of organisation and preparation needs to take place. There are also difficulties in recording, transcribing and analysing data which need to be borne in mind. The discussion is intended to be more detailed and wide-ranging than would be the case in single one-to-one -one interviews, but as we shall see later on, needs to be handled with great care. There are many different types of focus group. They can be relatively structured or unstructured. They may be based on pre-existing groups where participants know one another. This has both pros and cons since the fact that they already know each other may make them feel more relaxed, but at the same time they may feel so comfortable that they fail to fully explain their position as they take this knowledge for granted. Alternatively, they may be based on a group that share a common interest, for example a mother and toddlers group or a patient group, who may not necessarily know each other already. Also, they may be stratified depending upon the research question being investigated. For example, the researcher may wish to have a mix of genders or ages. The composition of a focus group needs careful consideration since this can affect the dynamics. For example, a single male in a group of females may act in a less macho stance compared to being in a group of males. Just like any other social research technique, there are many strengths and weaknesses associated with focus groups. Here are some of the principal advantages and disadvantages. The focus group facilitator has to work hard to ensure that one or two individuals do not dominate the discussion or that the conversation does not drift off on a tangent. When they are used effectively and managed well, they can generate a really rich set of data as participants build upon each other's ideas and views. Can you think of any other advantages or disadvantages? There are a number of practicalities to consider when setting up a focus group. Careful thought needs to be devoted to the following. Choosing a suitable location for the focus group to take place, depending on the purpose of the research and convenience. For example, if one is holding a focus group with women who have experienced domestic violence, a university or office setting is much preferable than a home setting. Deciding whether to tape record and or videotape it, written notes should also be made during the discussion. It is not always easy to identify who is speaking from a tape recording, and sometimes participants may speak over one another, even if they have been advised to avoid this when the ground rules are established. Preparing an interview schedule and in advance providing participants with clear instructions and establishing ground rules from the outset. Thinking about possibly including stimulus material, for example a video clip, photograph or a newspaper article about the topic, and considering potential ethical issues and obtaining informed consent.